it's my privilege to talk to you a little bit about Common Assessments Literacy and the link to College and Career Community Readiness. I talked to you a little bit about this in October 2015, and here we are two years later ready to take the next steps. But before we do that, Let's talk about what college, career, and community readiness means in the Oshkosh Area School District. When we say a student is college, career, and community ready, we mean they are proficient in life and career skills. They've had the opportunity to explore careers through numerous career exploration opportunities. They're financially literate, and they have a strong foundation in academics. So what does success look like in the Oshkosh Area School District, or how do we measure success around college, career, and community readiness? One of the ways that we measure success is through our literacy goals in the Oshkosh Area School District. Currently, we're working towards 85% of our students being proficient on the common assessments anchored in writing. And if you recall, we chose a writing assessment or common assessments anchored in writing because we know that the knowledge and skills needed to be successful in college is nearly indistinguishable from the knowledge and skills needed in the workplace. This is according to the studies done by the ACT and the American Diploma Project. They are showing that 90% of those skills overlap and we know that for college career and community readiness, writing and communication are a key skill. So anchoring our common assessments in writing totally makes sense to help us gauge our success. And when we look at common assessments and how we determine how we are growing and how we are doing in the Oshkosh Area School District, we want to be pulling in the same direction. We don't want to be waiting until end of the school year assessments such as the ACT, ACT Aspire, or the Wisconsin Forward Exam come in. We want to know how our students are doing district-wide before we ever get to those large-scale assessments. And by using common assessments anchored in writing, they can help us predict out what our needs are. It's a district-wide indicator. Also, remember that with common assessments, Writing is a skill that can be developed over time. Students can get better at it. It makes thinking visible within a content area. And once again, it's that key skill in college career and community readiness. It shows, when we look at it from a district view, common assessments show growth in writing and content knowledge because when you're writing, you're writing about your content. It informs our district school and teacher SLOs reveal strengths and weaknesses, and it's a marker of progress, once again, outside of standardized assessments. From a building view, those common assessments help measure and anchor your school and teacher SLOs, informs instructional planning for a course or a grade level team, gives you something to collaborate around, when, especially when it comes into instructional practices, and it's the opportunity to share teaching successes and opportunities to grow. And from a classroom view, it informs instructions for your students sitting in front of you right now. And what's really cool is that we now have a tool called EduClimber, which is a data warehouse that lets you own your numbers, look at your numbers, numbers when it comes to data about students. You're going to know where they are and where they're going. It positions you to consider re-approaching instruction in whole class, small groups, or individuals. It just gives you more information. It's also going to tell you who needs additional support or who needs additional challenges. Moving forward, we know that change takes time, effort, and support. And right now we're in year three of working towards this literacy goal of 85% of students proficient in this common assessment anchored in writing. We're not there yet. And so what does that mean and where do we go from here? So departments have worked to develop common assessments and rubrics. That puts, them, that puts us, puts you, in a place to begin considering how to make writing a consistent part of our instructional sequence. Like creating common assessments and scoring them, there will be a learning curve as we think about how literacy processes can help our students best learn our content. Our new focus is going to start to shift, and it's going to start to shift into these questions. How can we use reading and writing in the service of each content area? How do we build in writing opportunities as part of our instruction that emulates the writing task of our common assessments? And how do we not make this an event? We have the assessment. We know what it measures. 
but now are we are we are we using it are we using that are we using that information while we're moving towards the next step we would like to address some concerns that are surfacing and that are that are coming up and it boils down to three major concerns the concerns that we keep hearing about shifting into this next part of our work when it comes to literacy so that students are college career and community ready is a concern that we still don't know enough about writing and or scoring the writing we are asking of our students on common assessments in order to model it and engage students in it. A concern that we're not scoring properly or we're unsure of how to score. And finally, a concern that when we focus on reading and writing in all courses, we're turning kids off to our courses, especially the performance courses where this has not traditionally been a curriculum focus. So let's talk about the first one where we still don't feel like we know enough about writing and or scoring. Well, this is why the focus on district and department days has been on literacy or why a portion of your district and department collaborations, you are working with a literacy coach or you're working with an IST that has a literacy background. Keep in mind that when you are standing in front of your classroom or you're teaching a large lesson or you're modeling, you are the most experienced reader writer in your classroom. I guarantee it. And nobody's asking you to be an English teacher, but we are asking you as the most experienced reader and writer in the room to show students that thinking, reading, and writing, that is critical in your field or content area. How do you think and write and read like a scientist? How do you think, write, and read like a historian or a social scientist? How do you think, write, and read as an engineer? A concern that we're not scoring properly is the next one. This is where the benefit comes in when you write out the proficient response as a department. When you are crystal clear about what the writing needs to include to be proficient, it helps you use the rubric to score accurately and con confidently. And keep in mind, the process is not perfect. It's going to be messy as we learn, and that's okay. Remember, you have the permission to fail forward on this, and we are learning together. It's not going to be perfect. The learning process is messy. And if students are scoring poorly each time, this is where it's time to analyze the data. It's time to say, what is the data actually telling us? Is it our prompt? Is it the rubric expectations? Is it because our students have never practiced writing like this before? Each department has the ability to change the rubrics and prompts when they feel they have the reason to revise. Remember, we can make these revisions. This is not a standardized test. This is a classroom-based assessment that helps inform us about our kids. And then the other thing is, how often have your students been given the time to practice the kind of writing that we're asking on the common assessment and the rubric? It's really hard if they haven't had the opportunity to engage in that reading or writing practice and then all of a sudden they're given a test. And the third thing, a concern that when we focus on reading and writing, that we're turning kids off. Keep in mind, literacy is not replacing content instruction. Content goals are the primary learning targets every day, but how can you use literacy processes, reading and writing, to help students learn your content goals? Reading, writing, and communicating, no matter what area that you're in, pick any of the STEM fields you're going to have to communicate and a student is going to have to communicate. Remember back a little, just a few minutes ago when I talked about that 90% of the skills needed to be college ready are identical or indistinguishable from those to be career or workforce ready? The intentional use of literacy brings deeper understanding to our learners and understanding of the discipline is the goal. Students should absolutely be engaged in music, art and activity, construction, design, etc. But when we get them to write about or read about or think about these different content areas, we're deepening their understanding. And here's the other thing. We might need to be updating our messages that we're giving to students and parents. Reading and writing are strong focuses and or foci. And our students are expected to engage them in every single class because we know about reading and writing, listening, speaking set students up to learn each content better and deeply so that they are they are so that all our students are college career and community ready it's necessary we know that this is this is a key indicator for success 
So what we're asking you to do is we have to work together and we have to be pulling in the same direction. The five middle schools, the two high schools, we're one Oshkoshiri school district looking for our students to be college, career, and community ready. And we need your help to do that. Thanks for listening to my podcast this morning and have a great morning of collaboration.